Hello guys and welcome. My name is Dr. Peter and today we are going to be discussing how to clock seizures. Now in the exam situation, don't forget to use close-ended questions so that you can manage your time. Use late terms that the patient and the patient relatives can relate to. Also, if you are interested in the usual things a clinical student will need when preparing for the for exams, such as you know, OSCE stations, clacking station, examination, picture tests, then do wait to subscribe to this channel and watch out for more of our content. A seizure is actually different from a convulsion. A seizure is a sudden burst of uncontrolled electrical activities in the brain. Now, convulsions, on the other hand, are the motor manifestations of those seizures. Not all seizures will manifest as convulsion, but every convulsion definitely has an underlying electrical activity. These are the questions you ask when the patient um, presents with seizures. You want to ask for the age of the patient. Patients within the age of 6 months to 60 months will point towards um, febrile seizures. You want to ask the onset of the seizure. You also want to ask the nature of the seizure. Does it involve just one part of the body or the whole body? You want to ask the frequency, how many episodes per day. You also want to ask um, um, the interval between each episode. You want to ask the duration of each episode. Seizures lasting for more than five minutes are regarded as status epilepticus. You also want to know intraictal events such as um, drooling of saliva. This can point towards a possible aspiration of saliva. It's important to also know if the patient had um, post-ictal sleep or post-ictal loss of consciousness. Also, during the seizure, was there loss of sphincteric control? Atonic seizures manifest with um, reduced muscle tone generally and can lead to you know, um, loss of sphincteric control manifesting in fecal or urinary incontinence. Now, the nature of the seizure. Was the patient stiffened as in clonic seizure? Was it jerking as in clonic seizure or was there, was there a period of stiffening followed by a period of jerking movement as in tonic clonic seizures? There is something called a Jacksonian match and that is when a seizure starts from one particular limb and then spreads to the gener to gener generally to all over the body. It's called a Jacksonian match. Now, towards paralysis is when after the episode, the patient um, presents with um, reduced function or reduced motor activity in any particular limb known as thoughts paralysis now these are the questions you ask to characterize the seizure now associations with seizures patients within the age of six months to 60 months having fever and convulsion will point towards febrile seizures now patients who present with um, fever convulsions and neck stiffness will point towards encephalitis or meningitis. Now, patients who have used any psychoactive substances, this will likely, the seizure will actually be likely a manifestation of the drugs that these patients have taken. Also, you want to ask for family history of seizures. You also want to know if the patient has had any history of anorexia, lack of appetite, anemia, feeling of dizziness, um, weakness, and asthenia, weight loss over a period of time. This can point towards um, a possible malignancy with metastasis to the brain. You also want to know the last meal of the patient because hypoglycemia can also manifest as seizures. Now, if the patient has any focal neurologic deficit such as deviation of the angle of the mouth or weakness of any particular part of the limb, it will point more towards stroke as a possible cause of that seizure. Now, patients who, are, who might have yellow discoloration of the eye, swelling of the leg, swelling of the abdomen, will point towards hepatic encephalopathy. Patients with facial swelling, reduced urinary output, will point towards ure uremic encephalopathy being the cause of that seizure. So these are the questions to ask in terms of looking for associations and the possible etiology of that particular seizure. Lastly, it is important to tell what a fake seizure is from what a real seizure is. Um, psychogenic non-epileptic seizures manifest with patients who think they are having seizures but who in truth are not having uncontrolled electrical activities in their brain. Clinically telling the difference is important since the management plans for both um, um, diseases are quite different. Now, you need to look at the tongue of that patient. patient seizures are unconscious activities and patients who have lingual injuries point towards real seizures because they will not want to injure their, themselves also you want to you I want to ask the relatives or the relative who have observed the seizure if there is history of pelvic thrusting during the episode of the seizure pelvic thrusting rules out epilepsy as a cause of the seizure also in the post-ictal phase of the seizure 
If the patient is unconscious and you lift the arm of the patient over the face of the patient, release this hand. If it falls and smacks the face of the patient, it points towards a real seizure. If the hand, however, avoids the face of the patient, it tells you that the patient is actually not having, is not unconscious. And this can also give you a clue as to the as to the genuity of that seizure. So these are the questions to ask and this is how to go about clacking um, seizures. If you liked it, don't forget to share with your classmates and subscribe to watch more of our content. Thank you.